to the point where the doctor said I was like a 90 year old man, you know, mm -hmm. in, a, in a retirement home. So <clears throat> that having those kind of testosterone levels, like the way you feel is it's almost indescribable. Like the lack of motivation, the lack of uh, desire you have to even just live life but like a much more stable yeah. all the time. So let's talk about dosages now. Yeah, so what's, dosages. This is where things get crazy. This yeah, is where so everything changes. There's the TRT dosages yeah. and then there's your, your actual cycle. A little while later, you get a big spike in estrogen and then you have like a kind of moody yeah. <laughs> day. <laughs> Jason, we're the Table Monkeys, and today we are going to talk about anabolics in arm wrestling. Yeah. Um, so we've done a couple videos before, we'll throw a card in the window, um, about uh, some of my experiences with anabolics and stuff, um, but it was really just about my experience specifically and talking about TRT and some of the stuff that I've been through and then the first cycle that I went on and why I was going to do some of the stuff I was going to do. Um, and we've been thinking about it, we thought it might make a little more sense to kind of break it down uh, by compound. So this video is just going to be about testosterone and then we're going to do uh, another video probably about some of the different uh, injectables, some of the different orals, some of the SARMs. Uh, only things that I have personal experience with, we're going to try to keep it uh, to that so I can talk about uh, some of my own personal experience and then um, just, you know, give the pros and cons. Yeah. And, uh, but all sort of related to arm wrestling yeah. because that's the main reason I'm doing it. Of course. Now this is a topic that obviously doesn't get covered a lot in the arm wrestling community and it's kind of taboo to talk about. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but most of the arm wrestlers at the top of the game are on steroids. This is an untested sport, so there's no reason not to if your goal is to be the best you can possibly be. Even in the tested events, the, like the WAF, uh, they only test in competition, and I don't think they test everybody. No, yeah, right? so the, the, the testing in arm wrestling, because it's such a, a primitive sport still in the sense of the, the amount of money that's behind it and the level of production, um, there's just not anywhere near enough money. Again, we did another video about um, the bulletproof drug testing when mm -hmm. that whole Ryan Bowen RBJ thing happened, and they were talking about that throw a card in the window. That's why it that, never happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The point is that it's just way too expensive of uh, an endeavor to keep it where we can actually make it fair for everybody. Like it becomes to a point where you can, like Alex said, you can only test a couple people or like only the guys that win or even then just one of the five winners mm -hmm. at random. So when that's the case, uh, you know, a lot of <laughs> things slip through the cracks basically. Yeah. So we figure we take the reins and try to talk about arm wrestling or talk about steroids in the arm wrestling community yeah. um, to give you guys some more information so you can make that decision if you want to do it. At least now you have some you have more information so you know how to do it safely. And we also want to uh, reiterate what a serious decision uh, it is. And uh, if people got confused about this before when we talked about it, uh, but I am the only one who is on anything, uh, and like any PEDs of any yeah. sort. Alex is still 100% natural. Ashwagandha is still considered <laughs> natural. Natural. You haven't fucked with the turkesterone yet. No. Um, so that uh, is also something that's really notable uh, in the sense of that we have both sides of the story uh, still currently and there's a lot of reasons why Alex hasn't done that yet uh, and he's got his reasons why he will if he does but we'll get into that like as we get into it but the point is that it's a serious serious decision that you can't take lightly mm -hmm. and there are a lot of uh, gains to be made without them that are extremely valuable yeah and 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 that's gonna add to the gains you can get with them yes um, so, uh, so, anyway, anyway, so that's the, without the first do, yeah, let's, let's talk into about it. testosterone. Yeah. Um, so testosterone is where it all starts, right? Uh, it's testosterone basic, is, yeah, it's first of all, it's like the thing that everything else is derived from, uh, as far as every other type of, uh, anabolic steroid. There's lots of other realms of the PED world with peptides and, uh, SARMs and things like that, which we'll talk about, uh, differently, but as far as anabolics and steroids, everything comes from testosterone. Mm -hmm. And so we already it? have testosterone in our body, right? Yeah. What is it? Uh, well, it's a hormone. It's yeah. a, the primary male sex hormone. Exactly. Men have it, have about seven to eight times more than women, uh, in 
utero, it gets introduced to us and that's why we uh, grow male sex organs and help produce sperm and make men grow into larger, more stronger humans as they hit puberty or yeah. when they go through puberty. Yeah. Um, it's the higher you have your testosterone in, let's talk about in, as you're, if you're a natural, the better you will feel in terms of performing in the gym, uh, any kind of effort, your mind will be clearer. Um, you will feel better. You'll sleep better. Your recovery will be better. Almost everything in your daily life will be improved with a higher testosterone. With higher testosterone, and that and he's talking about just trying to manage your own testosterone naturally to keep it at yeah. a high level. Like whether that's through diet or uh, sleep habits or exercise. Uh, some exercise or even some sort of uh, like herbal and uh, some supplementation, vitamin supplementation. There's lots of ways to uh, keep your body producing at the highest level mm -hmm. uh, that you can. Uh, one of the best kind of lamest, like sorry, simplest ways I've heard testosterone described is basically that it makes effort feel good uh, and that's like what Alex was just saying about making kind of every part of your daily life feel better it, it makes like uh, it gives you drive it gives you motivation and all those things but it it, it allows effort to feel rewarding mm -hmm. you know uh, and um, so for me from my experiences like the reason that I am on uh, testosterone now and have been for I think it's almost five years now um, is because of uh, I had testicular cancer and after going through that and chemotherapy uh, my natural testosterone levels were just crushed uh, you know to the point where the doctor said I was like a 90 year old man you know mm -hmm. in a in a retirement home so <clears throat> that having those kind of testosterone levels like the way you feel is it's almost indescribable like the lack of motivation the lack of uh desire you have to even just live life like you just you're so like depressed it makes, yeah it makes you depressed right? yeah, yeah exactly and uh and so the, one of the things to understand with this whole world is that having low testosterone can be just as dangerous and have just as many bad uh effects on your body as having like way too high of testosterone like in the sense of not naturally you know yeah. like enhancing yourself and blowing it up too high so what is what are normal <clears throat> ranges of testosterone as a natural uh so normal ranges for um would be see it's funny that you said seven to eight times for women because uh if you look at like old greg videos from like three or four years ago it's 10 to 12 times okay. and i bet if you look back and back like it the, the scale probably is, right. is getting like shrinking the yeah. other way because men are getting so uh, lynch like <laughs> testosterone levels. Soy boys, yeah, and soy women boys. women's testosterone is getting higher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, which if you were to if you were to actually like look at the levels over history, you would see that that's totally happening. But yeah, right now um, the way the range works in Canada, which is lower than the states, um, the I, th I believe like um, what is it? Uh, what is it? Nanograms per deciliter, right? Mm. Uh, nanograms per deciliter. I believe it's uh, between like four and eight hundred would be like relatively normal for is most it the men. U.S. range. Uh, I think the U.S. range goes up to a thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think Canada's eight hundred, but it's somewhere around there. Like a, th a thousand would be like you're at the top end yeah. of of the spectrum, and we're going to start questioning like yeah. if you're natural or not. Um, but uh, but the point is that once you get to that low end. The, the, the lack of energy and motivation and everything you feel is, uh, is so demoralizing and also uh, how long it takes to recover. Like not only do you not have the energy to do a workout, but if for some reason something happens where you have to exert a lot of energy, the, the amount of time it takes to recover from that mm -hmm. effort that you put in is so much longer. Um, that was a pretty wide range of normal testosterone levels you gave right there. Mm -hmm. So you could be anywhere from, what do you say, 40? 400. 400 to, to, 800. to 800 or possibly 1,000. Like that's, yeah. a, that's a really wide range. Yeah, I and think it, that most like healthy men uh, feeling good would be in the like six to eight or the like 700 range. Right. Be like, like most, if you're going through TRT where your doctor's going to try to keep you, it's probably around that like 700 range. As, and that would all also depend on your blood work. Like... It, it, are you carrying too much water? Is your blood pressure too high at 800, even though you feel great? You know, like maybe right. uh, he doesn't want to keep you there for that reason and stuff like that. And your, your testosterone naturally is highest when you're like between 21 and 25, I believe. Yeah, that's supposedly the... And then it'll just slowly yeah. get lower and lower as you get older. And that's why men around like 35, 40 yes. start quite thinking about going on, on TRT, TRT right? and stuff like that. And I mean, I think that if you're healthy and you're really managing your diet and everything well, and you haven't been through anything traumatic, 
Uh, I don't think there's a need for TRT before your 40s. I think once you're in your 40s, there's a good argument for it in the sense that, yeah, maybe you can maintain, you can still maintain at a really good rate uh, into your 50s or up to, to the point of being 50, but um, progressing. It, you're, yeah, you're not going to be able to progress, that's for sure. And even if you even if you maintain at your best, you're still going to lose. Like there's st there's no way you're going to be the same at 50 that you were at 40. You're going to be some percentage. Like even if even if all your uh, performance is still there, like the, the the length of time it takes to recover, yeah. all those things are going to start to have an effect. They just have to at, yeah. at some point. So uh, it becomes an argument of like, well, I've already been making progress steady for 30 years, like or you know whatever, 20 years in the gym and now you're 40, like, do you want to continue to be able to slowly progress till you're 50 and then continue to progress and so on? Kind of like Stan Efferding, who's now like, you know, up 50 or 52 or something and he still looks like he does and yeah. is squatting six plates and that kind of stuff. Um, so once you're in your 40s, there's, you know, that's where maybe the decision uh, becomes much more realistic uh, to be made. But when you're younger, uh, you have to realize that's Different. a very, very, very big commitment. Yeah. And the main reason for that, and this would be like the main reason why you haven't just decided to jump on it, even though you want to be as strong as you possibly can, um, is that there's a lot to be said for the idea that once you're on it, you're pretty much on it. And it doesn't mean that that's a guarantee. That obviously, there's ways to PCT. Obviously, everybody's genetics are different. Some people can come off easier than others. But if you're going to make that choice, because there's no way to know before you do it, right. if you're going to make that choice, you 100% have to be committed and ready for that choice to mean that you're on it for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's because like once you go on it, you feel all this, all these amazing effects, right? You feel that increased drive, that increased hunger to go smash your workout, you're recovering better, you're sleeping better, your sex life is better. And then to come off that and to go back to normalcy or even below that because yeah. before your natural testosterone starts to kick in. Yeah, you're gonna have to take a dip below yeah. even what uh, is normal, um, which maybe could help you feel like normal feels okay again if you actually get through that. Uh, but that's the point is a lot of people don't is before they even feel this real real dip they're just back on cycle yeah and uh, and that's not really coming off and letting everything come yeah, back so it could really it could really affect your mood uh, it can could cause depression so you you may love it so much that you never want to leave and that's yeah. that's why it's such a big decision and and not even never want to like you're just not even able to in the sense like I just said where you you think that you've come off because you haven't done a shot in four weeks but you're still you're like none of your natural levels have actually come back. You know, it's still just the residual of what you've had in your system that's wearing off and you're starting to feel like shit. And you're like, yeah, I felt like shit for like two weeks. So I probably, I'm okay to like take another shot again. And then you start up again and uh, you've never actually had any time off. And the other thing that's not a great idea, which is why once you're on it, you almost just stay on it, is the idea of, okay, blasting for say, four months and doing a huge cycle and then uh, coming off f and taking three months to get your levels back. And like, so now you did do a proper PCT and you've come off and your natural levels uh, are looking good. Your production is back for like two or three weeks <laughs> or two months at most or something. And then you just crash it all again, you know, by like, going back on. yeah, by going back on again. So yeah, there's a way like, like Alex said, like if it's your lifestyle, the chances are you're gonna love it so much that like that's just the way you work out now. So you're either on cycle, like going hard, trying to make a big block of progress, and then maintaining with uh, like HRT levels, you know, and then kind of like that blast and cruise type uh, method because coming off and going through the whole PCT, which all the drugs you have to take to do that have their own, you know, uh, detrimental side effects on top of well. side yeah, effects. Yeah, exactly, right? So you have to go through all that as well just to just so you can see good blood work for a little bit and feel like your system's back on just to shut it off again yeah. is really not that healthy. And there's a lot to be said if you listen to Derek from More Plates, More Dates and uh, Leo uh, Longevity and stuff, a lot to be said about the fluctuation in body size and blood pressure and, and uh, water retention and everything. like. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be super high blood pressure or water retention, but it's not good to be going up and down either. That can yeah, be a roller coaster. That roller coaster can be yeah. really bad as well. So, um, anyway, those are all the dangers and the and the sort of pros and cons 
of testosterone as a as a, a hormone and as a, a drug. Um, but now what this is supposed to be more about is uh, which testosterone is the biggest of them all. As we said, it's everything's derived from it. It's got the the biggest history. It's got the most information about it. It's the most um, like usable as far as like the most people should or could or would want to be on it you know like uh not everybody or almost nobody should want to or should be on trend you know <laughs> but like it's still out there so yeah. uh but test is the one that's going to have the biggest background for that but the thing we want to get into is uh how it relates to arm wrestling right right so some of the hows and whys like how uh do you, how do you think about using it uh like as far as dosages or duration uh and then also how are you using it like how do you take it how uh like injection schedules stuff like that, right, all that so maybe we should touch on them. the different esters of testosterone yeah so that's one of the main things like with testosterone um that differs is the esters so uh and that can seem kind of confusing even guys that i know that are experienced they don't really understand the difference between test sip and test sustenon and they think there's like some massive uh, difference when they're both just testosterone the hormone the actual drug is exactly the same it's just the way it's being released mm -hmm. uh, the best way i've heard this described is like an ice cube so it's basically uh the ester is the, uh, is the type of ice cube that it is so it's either a bigger ice cube made of something that defrosts slowly or it's a, a smaller ice cube that def defrosts quickly mm -hmm. right so um the the esters that there are uh and uh, the only one of the esters of testosterone that i haven't tried is suspension so suspension is no ester at all it's literally just suspended in water uh and it's apparently really really painful but it's also immediate like you feel it within you know 10 15 minutes of taking the shot you are like ready to go and feeling like the androgen, like I want to get shit done feeling that testosterone makes you feel. So this is a really popular one, especially in the old school strength days, um, where people would be like on a regular, like, uh, what's called a bodybuilding TRT dose, which would be, we'll, we'll talk about dosages, <laughs> but sort of a mild dose of, uh, testosterone all year round. And then the week of, or the time of a competition, uh, they, or the time before a big lift. So like power lifters, like when they know they're going for a big deadlift PR, they might do an extra hundred or 200 milligrams of, uh, testosterone suspension, like pre-workout right before that workout, right before the workout, right before the workout. And then that workout is just supercharged. They get it done and then that's it, it's out of their system. Uh, so the other thing with the esters, the quicker that they go in, the quicker they come out, right. uh, as well as the longer it takes them to go in, the longer they come out. Um, so something with a really long ester uh, is gonna take a long time for it to come out of your system. The rule of thumb is five times the ester length. Mm -hmm. So if an ester uh, is uh, like with probe is um, one day or call it, yeah, just call it one day to make the math easy, then it takes five days before that shot is completely out of your system. Right, so let's probe the next one. Yeah, so after suspension would be probe, uh, which is now it's suspended in an oil, uh, which is the way the rest of the testosterones are suspended, um, which means that it's a powder form that the like uh, manufacturer will get it from, and then they'll mix it with a certain type of oil. Uh, so that's one of the things if you're, Getting testosterone, one of the things you pay attention to is the type of oil that it's in because some oils react better than others for certain people. Some people like certain oils better than others. Uh, but if you're getting good, clean uh, anabolics, it should be like a uh, cotton seed or a grape seed oil, uh, something like that. Or MCT oil is also really expensive, so it's hard to find that, but that would be obviously one of the better ones. Um, and it is that your body is gonna digest the oil. So uh, with all the oil-based ones, um, you have to count it in your macros? You could count it in your macros, and I believe that even guys that are like super hardcore with, uh, with you know, bodybuilding, at the time of uh, an event, like when they're getting close to a show, the amount of oil they're injecting is going to actually start to matter. Like, yeah. they're going to start to, they're, first of all, they're so calorie deprived that, you know, the top guys might actually be considering that in where they're like taking out an extra egg yolk so that they're they can cover mm -hmm. the fat that they're injecting. That's interesting. And the point in that is that's also going to affect when you inject. So uh, something I learned from uh, Vigorous Steve, uh, shout out to Vigorous Steve, uh, which has definitely made a difference um, in my uh, injection schedules, is I always inject in the morning on a fasted stomach. And that definitely makes a difference. Uh, it just feels uh, much 
like I can I can tell that the shot is going. I'm receiving it much better. Like, what do you feel when when you're when you've eaten uh, it differently? It just feels like um, like when I take the shot on a fasted stomach within a couple hours, I can feel the like euphoric like bit of a like yeah okay let's get something done and uh, I don't get that if I just shoot it like in the middle of the day or after like, a digest or slowly. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Which is what he said. He said he said it'll it'll get into your system the quickest. When you're and, fasted. And when yeah. you're fasted and everything. And okay. I definitely feel, uh, it just feels better yeah. having, sticking to that schedule. Okay, so suspension is instant, probe is one day. Yeah. Next After up. a probe, you've got sit and, and enthate. Uh, and as much research as you can do, you're going to find that these are basically the same anecdotal evidence that I've heard from bodybuilders. Some find that uh, sip is more watery than enanthate. That's sipionate? Sipionate, yeah. So test sipionate or uh, testosterone enanthate. And those esters are like four to six or five to seven days. Um, so those are the most common ones because those are the ones that m most people can inject like once a week or once every three or four days uh, and feel like they're getting relatively even blood levels, um, which is the next thing I'll touch on is injection frequency after talking about the timing. Uh, of all the injection frequencies that I've tried with all the different esters, 100% every other day injections, regardless of ester, is the best. Because of the way that all of them spike in their release, mm -hmm. you're better to just do it every other day. And then it doesn't matter if I want to switch esters or if I want to switch dosages because the frequency doesn't change, just the oil that I'm injecting changes. Right, so then you can have stable hormone levels throughout the week. Exactly. And stable hormone levels will help you feel better uh, consistent consistently yeah, yeah. and, and uh, that's one of the reasons why you hear people all oh, roid rage or things like that a lot of that's coming from glows right. like when they, they had a big high like they did a couple extra shots or something or like maybe with the test suspension for example if you did a really big shot of test suspension it's very likely the day after or a little while later you get a big spike in estrogen and then you have like a kind of moody <laughs> yeah. day um, so, so then there's so the test sip and test en anenthate that's yeah. four to six days and then there's one more, right? Yeah, and then the last one, uh, which is my personal favorite, is testosterone uh, sustenon, which is an, a combination of esters. Uh, it's basically a, a prop, a polypropanate, uh, and then a, a type of an enthate and a bit of a, or something that's like deca in the sense of uh, on decanate, which means that it's longer. So the esters there are one, three to five. Uh, five to seven, and then uh, ten to fourteen. Okay. So and it's a, and it's a ratio of those where it's uh, like thirty percent probe, twenty percent polyprobe, uh, thirty percent whatever. It is. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Something. So the like idea that. there is just to have more stable hormone levels. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And um, one of the reasons for that that people have noted that this might uh, be beneficial, and one of the things that Boston Lloyd, RIP Boston Lloyd, as much as he was a crazy fucker on himself. He did his research, he knew his shit, and he knew how to recommend for normal people to not fuck themselves up, but he had no worries about fucking himself up, yeah. obviously. Um, but one of the things that he noted was that he always found it better that people switch their esters every basically six to 10 weeks, or roughly every eight weeks. Uh, and another uh, couple people I've heard have noted or if you look in the forums, you'll see a lot of people prefer Sussanon because they feel it just gives them a better psychological uh, like um, clarity mm -hmm. or less um, neurotoxic fluctuations. Yeah, fluctuations with their uh, with their uh, sorry uh, with their mood and that kind of right. stuff. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons that's noted for that is that each ester is going to affect the CNS a little differently and like the way your body's gonna react to it. So by having Sussanon, having all four, it's like you're getting a constantly different type of, so it's keeping stimulus, stimulus mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not getting like overrun by right. one. And uh, I think that's the same thing that obviously you would achieve by using the um, switching your esters yeah. uh, protocol that um, cool. Boston would go with, which is, as I, again, ever since I implemented that, I've always felt that I don't have like a much more stable yeah. all the time. So let's talk about dosages now. Yeah, so What's, dosages. This is where things get crazy. This yeah, is where so everything changes. There's the TRT dosages yeah. and then there's your your actual cycle. Yeah, level. so let's say there's kind of three levels. There's like TRT, there's 
like actual TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Then there's bodybuilding TRT or powerlifting TRT. Maybe we shouldn't call it TRT. <laughs> no, well, it's, it is it is, and it isn't, but, but and there's a bit, like, I'll explain, I'll explain, I'll explain why, why people are still calling that a bit of a TRT, like TRT. Yeah. Or let's call it HRT. So TRT, HRT, because it's hormone, there's maybe some added hormones in there. And then there's actual like full on cycles. So your uh, TRT means that you're replacing your testosterone so that you're, when you get your blood work, your levels are within that normal to ideal range. You're not outside of 400 like, to 800. Yeah, 400 to 800. So like I said, mo if you look at like Greg Doucette's, he's probably the most transparent about his TRT and actually showing everything. And his doctor tries to keep him right around 700. From the people he's talked to that are also on TRT, you hear a relatively similar number. It's about 700 nanograms per deciliter that they want to be staying around as long as all the other blood work goes along with that and they feel good. Some people feel great on 500, so they, that's where they stop. Some people don't feel good until they're on 900, so that's where it gets to. Um, but it's basically, you know, in that range, under 1,000. And then your uh, bodybuilding TRT or powerlifting TRT. The thing you have to realize is that a lot of if you're if you're a performance athlete, you're carrying more mass than most people. So that's the first thing you factor in. So the way that a, a bodybuilder's like rule of thumb is your body weight uh, in milligrams per week. So if you're a 300 pound bodybuilder, you're doing 300 milligrams of testosterone a week. If you're at 260 pound, it's 260 if you're, so it's roughly around that. So when you hear somebody on like 350 or less, that would pretty much be considered like a bodybuilding TRT, unless they're like a 200 pound bodybuilder. Right. You know, if it's a 200 pound little bodybuilder and he's on 350, that's looking more like a cycle. Like it's hard for him to argue. 200 pound guy is a little guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for you. Yeah, well, for me, so yeah. yeah, I know. But, um, Hey, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, 150 pound body, there we whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the point is, you, you get you get the point yeah. there. It's relation to your body. Relation weight. to your body weight, and then with where we said TRT versus HRT, uh, usually the bodybuilders are going to be combining it with a couple other things. Growth hormone is a very common, uh, and the synergy you get between growth hormone and uh, testosterone is really, really, really does work. It makes the other, <laughs> sorry, it makes the other. Uh, uh, anabolics work really well. Yeah, but we'll talk about growth hormone in another, in another video. video. Yeah, but that would be where the where the bodybuilding HRT, which would be admittedly where I basically stay at now. I did the TRT thing for a long time, and when I made my I'm going on my first cycle video about a year and a half ago. Uh, at that point, I went from cycle to bodybuilding TRT, and have kind of been in that bodybuilder bodybuilder TRT zone or HRT zone for a while. Uh, experimenting and trying different compounds to see what's the most effective for our wrestling specifically. Yeah. I just want to go back. So for TRT, right, yeah. testosterone replacement therapy, what's they're the just dosage? taking, what's the dosage? Yeah. What's the actual dosage? And they, are they only taking testosterone? Yeah, usually. So in the States, TRT doctors will prescribe some other things, like they can get a little crazy down there. Yeah. Um, Anavar is pretty popular, which is an oral, and then, like I said, growth hormone, uh, and then sometimes DECA, which is, um, so there's three families for the steroids. Testosterone is the main one, and then DHT, which is a derivative, like a offshoot of what testosterone becomes in the body. So there's a lot that are derived to that, and then the 19 Nords, which is like another part of the testosterone. So the DECA is on the 19 Nord side, and some people feel really good on that as well, like mentally. So that's one that is used commonly in TRT, right, okay. actually prescribed by doctors in the States. But for the most part, yes, TRT, I think, should mean testosterone replacement therapy. And it would be just to get your testosterone levels at normal, which could be anywhere between 100 to 200 milligrams of testosterone a week. Right? Right. That's okay. something you would have to take. And then your HRT levels, they're like relative to your body weight. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe give or take a little bit. So like I'm on 350, I only weigh 305, but I mean, it's not a hundred percent pharmaceutical. So I think there's a little bit of leeway there. True. And then they're also including some other hormones on top of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then your like blasts would be north of 400 milligrams a week. I think, um, you, it, there are a lot of people saying that you don't need to do that much, like lowest effective dose. And I believe in that a lot, which is why I haven't, like I've never gone over 350 milligrams of tests yet. I've done other things, but I haven't blasted that hard because 
uh, I want to I want to exhaust what these dosages can do before I go up to anything bigger than that and I also want to have levels to get to and also feel like there's a reason for it mm -hmm. you said even though I I had to open the door because of medical history I still want to be cautious about how uh, deep <laughs> I go yeah, into the you want to do this for a long time right yeah exactly you don't want to end up like certain people in this community yeah, yeah. so so yeah north of 400 um, and then you'll hear people going north of a, of a gram up to two grams a week even uh, you hear crazy dosages of like three and five grams Holy some shit. people um, <clears throat> you know which Anybody who you really listen to who's really honest about that, Larry Wheels, Gollum, two guys that have gone crazy dosages and talk about it. Uh, there's a huge, Brandon Allen too, uh, there's a huge diminishing return. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think from what from all the research I've done, I don't think there's much of a reason to go much more than 1,000 or maybe 1,500 depending on how you respond. Diminishing, terms in ter or diminishing returns in terms of benefits, but do the side effects dramatically increase yeah, with exactly. higher doses. For sure, yeah. for sure. That and that's a big part of it, right, is managing the side effects. Um, which has a lot to do with dosages and duration. So uh, that's another reason for me why I, I like why I'm staying in the lower dosages and why I don't want to blast uh, very high is because once you go up it's the same like it's the same as if I was natural and I go on a cycle and then I come off cycle. Well if I'm like if I'm always like I feel great at 350 milligrams a week and then I do a thousand a week for two, you know, two months or something. Well, going back down to 350 isn't going to feel mm -hmm. like it did anymore at all. I'm going to have to go to like 500 to feel what 350 used to feel like. And, and that's how, cycle. yeah. And that's how that vicious cycle gets to where by the time you've been doing it for 10 years, you're on a gram a week just to cruise, you know, and you hear doing like 600 milligrams a week to, to cruise, which is understandable because that's how it's going to escalate uh in order to feel normal you know yeah and and yeah that's not like is it it just becomes more dangerous you know so it's a risk factor at that point it's not that it's bad or evil or anything like that it's just higher risk on your health yeah this right? is this is not a morality <clears throat> issue. yeah there's um, no morality there's no judgment here uh about any of this but yeah side effects are real yeah. and they do get worse with higher doses yeah they are somewhat dependent on your genetics, yeah. right? So you'll certain people will lose their hair. You obviously did not lose your hair, yeah. and and well, as we get into other ones, there like I'm not invincible to the hair, uh, but um, but yeah, some people will are very sensitive to it, and it literally like falls out in handfuls, um, and then other people are yeah more prone to not having to worry about yeah. it. But there's a whole list of possible side yeah, effects. Yeah, cholesterol right? and blood pressure are things I obviously have to worry about more. Uh, Add my medical med medical history, yeah. and my family history. Um, and yeah, acne can be a real big problem for, for a lot of people. I don't have a big issue with that, but I will, I don't get breakouts, but I'll get like random, like big ones where it's like, ah, oh, that's an annoying one. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> so it affects everybody differently. And again, all those side effects are usually from fluctuation. Mm -hmm. So it's usually for me, it's cause I'm experimenting with different things and I take something that's going <clears> to <throat> peak my estrogen more or, or drop it more or something like that. And that's usually where the side effects manifest from yeah right so um so yeah and that's also why the esters are important uh you know with the dosages so um i guess in all this we didn't really talk too much about how it relates to arm wrestling or how i'm using it for arm wrestling but again that's because this is such a basic uh like common one like everybody's going to be on it yeah. it helps you recover better obviously that's why you would want to use it for arm wrestling it helps you <clears throat> feel more aggressive and stronger all those reasons um one of the ways that I use the esters to be effective or to try to be strategic is uh, is using the fast esters the week of a competition. So mm -hmm. like where I'm, I'm on 350 basically all the time, uh, for the week of the competition, if I'm on 350 of Sustanon, I'll add another 350 of Pro just for that week, uh, which again, duration. If I'm only on it for a week, it's not like my body's gonna readjust and be used to 700 milligrams a week. It's just for that week and the feel like, holy shit, what's going on? Which is what I wanna feel the week of the competition. Right. Um, and as long as I come off the next week and, and go to the 350, the 350 still feels totally the same as it did before. Um, so that's been effective method for me. Uh, and then I'll add some other compounds the week of a competition, which we'll talk about when we get to those other compounds. Um, but yeah, it's the most basic one. So it's nothing really too specific of why 
it's special for arm wrestling. It's not special for arm wrestling. It's just special for life. All strength sports, yeah, and life, right? Yeah. And if this is your first cycle, you would probably just do testosterone, correct? That's what I. That's what you know, Greg Doucette yeah. uh, recommends. Yeah, for sure. If it, if you're actually taking the, if it's your first injectable, if you're f finally taking the step to the dark side of injectables, then yeah, testosterone 100 percent should be your first uh, thing that you do. Do not do uh, like. A, a no test cycle like you have to have testosterone in any cycle that you do uh, because everything is suppressive um, <clears throat> there are SARMs and stuff that you could do that are lighter like we uh, why I'm saying if test is your first injectable like there are other things you could do that uh, are still like PEDs but they're not actually the anabolic system. and going to crash well they will a little bit but it's usually right. it depends on how you are strategic with them but yes, injectables, once you're ready to take that step, it's definitely testosterone first and uh, lowest effective dose with everything. Lowest effective know? dose and for only, well, if you want to come off, right? Yeah, the if longer you, you come off, stay on, just yeah. the worse, the harder it's going to be. For sure, for sure. And uh, and yeah, looks, I guess if you were to, again, for me, because of my medical history, I've never even considered coming off. It's not been an, an option. So uh, I'm not too well versed in that side of, of things um, and everything we're saying is just our experience and our opinion. Like none of it is actual. Oh, we're not advice. doctors, by the way. Yeah, we should yeah. have said at the beginning. Yeah, I know we put a claim, we put a you know a disclaimer at the front, but yeah, obviously we're not doctors and we're not uh, giving any real medical advice here. No. Um, this is all just for fun, but um, and for you know your own uh, anecdotal. Right. Experience. So if you do want to make this decision, definitely do way more research yeah. than just watching than this just video. just watching this video, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, the, the, the main reasons like why you would get into doing, why you would start going down this path, uh, really, they, they have to be for a super serious goal. And it should never be uh, just as a shortcut. Mm -hmm. There are, unfortunately, the reality of the, the, or the reality of the world is that there are a lot of goals out there that will require some sort of enhancement in order to achieve. Um, and, uh, you know, being the number one arm wrestler in the world is just one of them, mm -hmm. uh, at this point. And like we said, there's a lot of them out there where the goal is going to require it. Um, but unless you're a hundred percent set on that goal and have already put in a lot of effort to yeah. get towards it, there's really no point in thinking that uh, steroids is somehow the answer. It is not the answer at all. It is just uh, becomes a part of the equation at the very, very top of certain uh, sports and you know avenues of success. Well said. So I think that basically covers it yeah. for the first episode of Anabolics and Arm Wrestling. Yeah, if and you, sorry. Well, I'll say, if you like this video, please like the video. Leave feedback down in the comments. We'll definitely get back to you with, with all your, uh, if you got some questions about this. Uh, we'll be going into depth into other compounds in future videos. Yeah, so, and like you said, because this is the most basic and the kind of broadest one, this is probably the lengthiest video, hopefully, that we end up doing. But uh, like Alex said, the everything else we break down um, is going to be more specifically geared around arm wrestling because uh, after testosterone, then it's really about making specific choices because right. everything gets a little bit more defined. But testosterone, again, is the most broadest of them, and you could you could not arm wrestle at all and still totally need testosterone in your life. Yeah. So uh, do your research. Don't listen to us. Just like, subscribe, smash the bell, all of those things. And monkeys out. Peace.